This is KGW News at Noon. It is a beautiful day in the Rose City, and as we cruise into the weekend, we want to take you for a quick spin around the neighborhood. What you're looking at right now is some video we shot near the Selwood waterfront with our drone Fly 8 yesterday. Gorgeous shots there. Hello, I'm Christine Pitawanich. Thank you so much for joining us here at noon. If you love the sun, today is definitely going to be full of it. Let's take a step outside right now to take a look at some of our sky cams. Here's what things look like at this point, a lot like yesterday except today we are on track to break a record. Meteorologist Rod Hill is in the Weather Center and Rod, another day in the 80s, huh? Yeah, uh, and maybe, I mean, 90s actually in play today, if you can believe that. Wouldn't that be something if we went 70-something, 80-something, and 90-something in three consecutive days? We are running 10 degrees ahead of yesterday's pace. Yesterday at noon, it was 66. Right now, we're at 76 degrees. Now, the weather setup isn't exactly the same, and I don't anticipate that we're going to warm up 15 degrees like we did at this time uh, yesterday. But here are the numbers, and they are warm. 80 in Hillsboro, 80 Scappoose, 82 Tigert, 80 in West Lynn, 80 degrees at noon. These are currents out in Camas. Trotdale is reporting 77 and an east wind that has been gusting as high as 31 miles per hour. Now, our weather model suggests that the east wind will actually start near the gorge fizzling or calming somewhat easing is probably a better word easing a little bit as we go through the afternoon hours. Uh, Salem's at 78 can be 84 Aurora 82 and check out our story is 77 still believing there will be 80 degree temperatures along the north coast. So here comes your afternoon. I've upped my forecast high from 86 to 88. Remember the record today is 82. It's a low record. It's one of those records is begging to be broken and we will break it. 81 still at 8 o'clock. Really Christine the only question is could we hit 90 degrees? Anyway, we'll have the weekend forecast, which still includes a much cooler and cloudy Sunday. That's coming up. Oh my goodness, 90s, could you believe it? Okay, thanks Rod. Now to Portland's Montevilla neighborhood, where Portland police say a man in a wheelchair died in a hit and run crash at Northeast 82nd Avenue and Gleason Street. It happened just after midnight. Portland fire was first on scene. Firefighters tried to save the man's life, but he died before ambulances arrived. Police say the driver took off and hasn't been found. The I-5 bridge project has been decades in the making and it only seems to be getting more complicated. Lawmakers heard from local leaders, transportation officials and the public last night. They weighed in on the latest plan to pay for a new bridge, which now lumps in another controversial I-5 project. Catherine Cook explains. First, the I-5 bridge replacement will increase safety. For two and a half hours, people weighed in on House Bill 2098. The bill breaks down how Oregon could pay for a new interstate bridge. The state would commit a billion dollars from its general fund, same as Washington, plus whatever toll costs may cover. Supporters praised its focus on leveraging federal funding to pay for the new span. We need this project. We need this bridge. It needs to be replaced now. We have a window for federal money that is not going to come back again. Many emphasize the critical need to replace the bridge, knowing it would fail if and when the big one hits and the importance of improving transportation commerce. With severe congestion during peak travel hours, the bridge is no longer serving those travelers efficiently or safely. Further, the 106-year-old bridge is at risk of catastrophic failure in the event of an earthquake. Amendments in the bill call for capping bridge spending at $6.3 billion. Critics say a limit that high feels like handing ODOT a blank check. We need a bridge that is climate forward. And we need it to leave money for vital transportation improvements throughout the state. Another amendment suggests making the bridge smaller and capping spending at $3.4 billion. Many community members supported that option. So I'm asking you as a father, as a teacher, and as a business owner to shrink this project. Please tell ODOT to live within their means and pay for this project using some of the billions of dollars they manage every biennium. Another big sticking point with the latest edition of the bill, it lumps in the Rose Quarter expansion with the I-5 bridge replacement. A line of the bill says the legislature will fully fund the Rose Quarter project in the next two legislative sessions. Many have long opposed widening that part of the interstate for environmental reasons. They want an I-5 option that doesn't do that. An approach that connects our communities without endangering the general fund or the climate. Catherine Cook.
KGW News. From the I-5 bridge to I-205, where a group of lawmakers is trying to push pause on plans to toll. A new bill introduced in the Oregon legislature this week would hold off on tolling for two years. Previous bills have tried to completely block tolling on I-205, but this one is just asking for a delay while a task force studies the impact. We've also got a quick traffic alert to tell you about as we head into the weekend. I-5 South on the lower deck of the Markham Bridge will be closed starting from 10 o'clock Sunday night to 5 o'clock Monday morning. All traffic will detour onto I-405 South. ODOT is closing the bridge so it can wrap up inspections.